hi there and thank you for watching this video in this video i am going to share with you my experience building my first home ever in africa to be exact we are actually in namibia a country in southern africa so i am building this home in the village for various reasons which i will share in this video i hope this video inspires you to also build your home whatever you want to build it and before i get into the whole process of building my home i just want to share with you my other good news um i bought property in the dominican republic and this is a title right here and as you might know dominican republic is the number one tourist destination in the caribbean so please stay tuned for the vlog on how to buy property in the dominican republic hi guys welcome to my channel it's your girl valentina nicknamed the african dominican as you all know i'm a proud african with roots in angola and namibia with that said let's get into the building um process of this video so here i am you know entering the building store you can pretty much um find all types of building materials in this store it's one of the most popular building stores in namibia i was pretty much coming here every day you know because the builders in the village you know you ask them what do you need and then they give you the list and then a day before they build something else, they, they'll tell you, oh, I forgot this. Can you please go and get this? So every day I was running to the store to pick up stuff. Um, it was definitely an, a, a good experience because this is actually my first time managing a building project. You know, naturally I'm a manager and my job involves managing projects and people. So I do love to manage things, you know, um, I have that eye for administration and human resources. <laughs> build it. I've been coming here to buy so many different things for my building project. I've met some wonderful people who become friends now. Great customer service. So I highly recommend that build it in Chicago. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. This one of my builders. Kafita. Kafita. Django, hi. Hi. <laughs> it's my builder I have a whole team <laughs> guy over here right here is our neighbor yeah. he's helping to transfer some of the materials because our car is too big for all the stuff we're buying I'll show <laughs> this is a customer service I'm talking about brought us water I love this oh man thank you <laughs> this guy has been helping me a lot thank you so much for a great customer service you are the best Joshua and of course that's the other nice guy here um, his name is um, Steven. Hi Steven. Uh -huh. Great customer service guys. You come to build it. This is the guy to look out for. And of course this guy right here. He's been very helpful. Say hi. I'm going to miss you guys. He's been very kind and helpful. Thank you for all your help. This is Gisela, one of the cool people I know in building. Hey Chris. Yeah, Chris another nice guy. Hi. Alright guys, a little backstory. I live and work in Washington DC, the capital city of the USA. So why am I building a home in the village of Africa in Namibia? I go to Africa maybe once every two years, but I want to start going every year. So why am I building a house in a village? Because I live in a big city. I believe in big cities. I'm a city girl. So I want to build my home somewhere different. You know, if I want to be in a city, I might as well just stay in Washington, D.C. But I want to be somewhere different, give my kids, my family a different experience. I love the unique village lifestyle that I cannot get anywhere else and I want to be able to give that to my kids, my family and also my friends who may want to visit my village home. I never used to be a fan of the village life. I, I would go there for two days and just leave and go back to the city. But right now you guys, I'm going to take you through one of the village homes on my mom's side of the family where I used to stay before when I used to come and visit. This is an authentic village in Namibia. And it's basically just like going back to the 1800s, you know. At least now they've added um, tin houses. Before it was just straight up huts, hut houses. All right, so right now we are walking to the uh, living room um, in this compound or homestead. This is the first thing you do when you enter a village. You go and greet uh, people. So, and look at those kids. Uh, so sweet. Yeah. 
<laughs> she's another vibe lovely lady um so she's um probably in um 80s plus so those are her grandkids um she has a lot of sons and some daughters um but the thing about the village life is like um the daughters and sons usually just give birth to their kids and then they dump them to the grandparents to raise um personally i don't agree with that um you know but they do go off in the city or elsewhere to look for work and you know they're coming you know visit their kids every now and then all right let's go and see the rest of the um village homestead as you as you all can see um this village has a lot of huts like i mentioned earlier and this is one of the rooms actually uh where people sleep i used to sleep in one of these when i used to visit um you know um, they have brick walls some of them have tree logs as um the walls they don't have actual bricks but most of them now um do have brick walls this is another room a tin house um i used to, i slept in here i think once or twice before when i used to come and visit from the city and also um yeah it's definitely not the most comfortable place to stay in the village that's why i couldn't stay for that long and we will try to help as much as we can you know sending money and other stuff to our relatives and they don't have indoor plumbing so this is what i had to do all the time i know you're wondering why i'm holding the toilet paper and this basically in the village the, 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 the northern part of namibia some houses don't have indoor plumbing they don't have toilets um so you have to go into the field and do your business there most of the village houses, homesteads are like that. Only the rich people, super super rich people have bathrooms or toilets in their homesteads. Like I have different family members. So where I am right now, they don't have indoor plumbing, but when I go to my other family members, they do. But without toilet, we used to use sticks back then, because I wouldn't have toilet paper, so we used to take a stick like this, a, big, a thick one maybe, then you wipe your butt with it. We're a little bit advanced. I can bring my own toilet paper to the village. I always come prepared so you can do your business. So you have to find a bush, your own spot where nobody can see you inside the bush there just make sure you bring your hand sanitizers you find a bush sometimes when it's dark at night i do it a little bit close to the house find the bush you, you sit down like this okay and do your business of course the flies will come flying on your poop because they want to eat your poop but you just sit like this do your business and then when you're done just take toilet paper and you wipe yourself okay toilet paper and then when you're done of course you dig your hole Take your hole and you push your poop inside the hole. Nice, nice. Then people, people, so people don't step on it. It also so it doesn't look nasty. And you carry it up. You also put toilet paper inside the, the hole. Toilet paper and poop inside the hole. And you carry it up. Figures like me when I used to do this stuff. But we have to adjust. It's culture. Yeah. So that's how you use the bathroom in in the village. Like I told you guys, um, everything is just natural. Like back in those. There is a long time ago, maybe in the 1800s. It's almost like that in the village, so they don't have indoor plumbing, and they don't have indoor showers or bathrooms. Everything is just natural. So of course, this way we take a bath. So you know, step your feet on here, take a bath. You have to bring your own water, water from the tap or the rain. And of course, you put um, the water in there. Of course, I was can prepare. I brought my toiletries. And of course, you pour your water from this thing. Or whatever you, you store in the water from, you just pour it. So you just put the water in here, okay? And then you take your shower, okay? And when you take your shower, of course, I'm not gonna do because you know, I don't wanna expose myself. You sit and then you decosher. Now, now you take a shower, splash water on yourself, your face, your arms, and of course, you just shower. Shower the old fashioned way. Water. Of course, you take your little wrap, whatever you brought. Put soap on it like I always can prepare. I have my soaps, everything here. I prepared your sash with your face. I want for the face. Because I have one for the body. So face first, rinse my face, and I put my soap and everything on here. And I wash my body after soaking with water. Wash with soap. And then from there, take the water, rinse myself off. And of course, I'm you know I'm very not OCD, but I always wear soft shoes. Because see, I always have to bring my own shower shoes. But it's up to you what you want to do, but I cannot take a shower tap. I always have to bring shower shoes when I take a shower. 
So that's how you park here. So right now we are walking back to uh, my mom's house. Like I mentioned before, I have two village homes. I have my dad's side of the family and his own village. And I also have my, my mom's side of the family in her own village. Like many working African parents, they usually have homes in the city and then homes in the village. So my parents also have homes in the capital city of Namibia called Windhoek. They also have their own village homes. And a lot of families um, do do that. You know, they have homes in a city where they work and then they have um, their resting homes and their real homes in the village where they come to rest and just reconnect with their family. So this whole land that you see, that's our family land. It's a huge land. There's also um, more land behind this building that you see, this whole compound, the small land on the other side. So this is where I am building my village home of my family so that when I come to visit, I don't have to inconvenience anybody. I have my own place where people can stay. We have running water and indoor plumbing and electricity in our village home where my mom is. Um, so that makes building a lot easier because before people would go to um, the well or the, the, uh, the river bed to get water. And I also ended up having to buy that water tank so that we can store water because sometimes the water would go out for a couple of days that's why it's always good to have storage system for the water. So onto the building process. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm building um, four units, so to speak. So this is the first building that I built and we are adding more to complete my side of um, the land. I paid cash for everything, for all the building materials, the labor, and everything to do with this building, I paid in cash. I didn't take out any loans. Um, and one thing I like about building in Africa and um, I guess the rest of the third world countries compared to America is that you actually own your building. You actually own what you are building. In America, what, when you buy a home or you build a home, it's not yours. It belongs to the bank and the government. The moment you default on the payment of the house, whether it's through taxes, which you pay every year, or if you don't make your monthly mortgage, you lose that house. But when you build your own homes in the Dominican Republic or Africa, Namibia, they are yours to keep. You know, you don't have to pay taxes on it every year. Nobody can take your homes away from you. So that's why I'd rather invest in property in Dominican Republic and Africa, because at least I know they are mine to keep. No matter what happens, they belong to me and my family. So right now we are finishing up the ceiling of this um, bungalow. Uh, it's a two bedroom um, bungalow uh, with a lot of space. Uh, and they are just completing the ceiling right now. Um, you know, one thing before I did, um, before I built these homes, I did get quotes. I got three different quotes from the people that built in the village. And I took the person with the most experience and also with a reasonable price. You know, I didn't go for the cheapest one. I got the most experience. And um, as you can see right now, the ceiling looks great and it's ready for the painter to paint it and also to touch up the walls. Um, great job, guys. Great job. And like I was saying, um, make sure you get, um, you know, the most experienced person that you can get at a good price um, because you don't want to waste your time and money getting a cheap person who's not going to do a good job. Okay. And also make sure you have everything in writing as far as your contract. I have a contract with my builder. You know, he had his own people, but I've noticed that later on when he saw me buying furniture for these homes, he, he wanted to up the price. You know, he was like, oh, we had a misunderstanding. It's actually this much. And I was like, no, you quoted me this price and that's why I picked you. So just make sure you have a contract because they will change up on you. I guess when he, when he saw me buying furniture, he thought, hey, she has a lot of money and I don't have a lot of money. I'm not rich. I'm comfortable and I manage what I have, you know, so just make sure you have that, um, contract and i did buy the solar system for the um for the homes that you know that i'm building it's really really reasonable and i'd highly recommend it the cost of labor was reasonable and um i did feed all the um people who were working on my buildings because usually people don't feed um the workers but i wanted to feed them um just because i thought that was a nice thing to do so anyway the first building um he has um attached um shower and an attached toilet but you have to go outside the building to access them but I, I am going to add an indoor toilet to um to both buildings because going outside to use the toilet in the middle of the night can be a bit uh, scary well for me anyway so what i had to do was um sleep with a bucket in my room you know just because i didn't want to go outside in the middle of the night so here they are setting the foundation for the second building we just want to have a huge bedroom with um a storage um room um, slash um, bathroom 
and as you can see there this foundation is set and they're about to start building it i'm not a builder so i'm not gonna get into the technical terms that they use for building i'm just a project manager so if you are a builder and you want to make any interesting comments or you want to enlighten us on this process please type your comment below all right but as you can see in this whole build building project everything is being done by hand no machinery and one thing i have to mention that um the villagers um they have their own basic tools but um you have to maybe buy a few um of the expensive tools but most of them they have the basic tools i have to buy the wheelbarrows myself and i have to buy the uh generator to be able to put in the ceiling because they didn't have that one of the one of the villagers had a generator called rent but it was so expensive so i was like i'm not gonna just rent a generator for that much i might as well just buy my own generator so i bought a handle generator which, which is uh, one of the best qualities handle brand new it was a very um expensive generator that i bought but it's definitely worth worth it because um it's matter use you can use it for different stuff in the house to um to light to cook when you have special events you can also use that same generator so that's why i want to just buy and keep it in the house i'm not going to rent it out i don't want to rent it out because i don't want it to get broken because once it get broken i'm not going to be able to recuperate my investment also one thing i forgot to mention is that the bricks that you saw we made those bricks at home, most of them anyway. Uh, we hired one of the villagers who actually makes bricks. So he brought he brought his brick machine to us and then he was able to make the bricks on our property. But it ended up raining and then some of the bricks that they made ended up being damaged because of the rain. But the good thing is that that same guy actually sells bricks. So all he had to do was go back to his house and then replace our bricks with the ones he already made at his house and then bring them. So we didn't have to pay extra for any more bricks and we didn't have to waste any more time. But just be mindful of that. Oh, and it's also cheaper to make your own bricks at home versus buying them. So that's why we, we wanted to make our own bricks with our own manpower. Um, but you can always buy them and then pay more if you want. All right, the second building is almost done. So now they are working on the roof i wanted a thatch roof like those images but i didn't realize it was so expensive they were charging like almost thirty thousand Arabian dollars which is equivalent to about 1700 or 1700 us dollars that's just for the thatched roof but i definitely want it um so when i add more units i want to have um thatched roof because i definitely like the design and it brings out that village um look even more but this is a diamond um, building is also popular in the villages now everybody's putting on diamond roofs so that's called a diamond roof all right so so the first building is um second building is done um it's a huge bedroom um you like it better when it's finished completely but it's not completely done yet but that's a diamond roof and it's popular now in the villages i know you're probably wondering how much money i spent on this whole project i'm gonna share that in the next video when uh, i show you the final product so that i can tell you how much i spent in total so just hang tight and look out for, for part two of this video where i'll share all the costs so what you're looking at right now is an outdoor shower and bathing area you know i wanted to have that true village experience where you can actually bath and shower in the outdoor in the nature you know we already have an indoor shower in the main building but this one i wanted to be outside uh, and i like how they build it so if you know you, you can have both village experience you can have an indoor shower and bath and also have an outdoor one i definitely like that so what we are building here is an outdoor camping area you know this i want this to be a, you know an area where you can bring your tent and just sleep outside in the open, you know, with your tent. That's what we're building right here. Um, so I wanna be able to uh, provide different um, accommodations for sleeping. You can sleep in the bungalow, in the diamond, in the, you can set up a tent outside and sleep comfortably. And I'm also going to uh, add this um, authentic village hat for a true village experience. So please stay tuned for part two, where I'll show you the final product. So please stay tuned. All right, guys, that's the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. And of course, don't forget to leave your comment below, like and share, all right? And thank you so much for your love and support. And of course, to all my people of African heritage, please let's embrace our Africanness. Africa is beautiful. You are beautiful. And to my non-African heritage people, you are loved. You are welcome to anytime. And of course, I love you guys. Thank you for your support and God bless.